Hey gang, this is Pastor Smat at Rooftop. It's been a while since I've smattered at you, so I thought it'd be time for an update. First of all, happy Thanksgiving. In these awkward and difficult times, this is a season to count our blessings, which are manifold. I, for example, am grateful for a couple kids of my own who have saved me from having to rake my own leaves this year free of charge. That's the advantage of having your own kids, free labor. I mean, there are other advantages too, but mostly that one. Secondly, lots of you have asked how the recent county safer at home order affects our church uh, with rising COVID cases and hospitals that are beyond capacity and the holiday season upon us. Our local leaders are trying to slow the spread with some renewed restrictions. Now, the short answer to your question about how the safer at home order affects rooftop is that it doesn't really change the measures that we're already taking. Churches are considered businesses, and businesses are allowed to operate at 25% of their fire code capacity. So we're allowed to have up to 360 people in our building at one time. Right now, our Sunday morning attendance is below that by a safe margin. Now, the order also requires us to keep the building clean and space people out as best we can, which we're trying to do. The county has also required face masks, unless the the masks prevents you from doing your job. We've got face masks available for anybody who wants to come worship with us. The singers and the speakers on stage are far enough away that it shouldn't be a problem. So, with those measures being taken, feel free to join us on Sunday morning. If you want information about our kids' classes or the COVID situation, visit our website. Or if you just need to stay at home because of your conscience or you're not feeling well, feel free to watch us online at rooftop.org slash TV. We are happy to see you online either way. No judgment. Before I smine off, though, I do want to take an additional minute and remind you of the two biblical principles that we've committed ourselves to as we muddle our way through this health situation. I consider these principles the two handrails that we are grasping onto as we stumble our way forward in the dark. The first handrail is submit to our leaders. The Bible says that we should submit to our leaders. Uh, Paul writes to the Romans, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. It is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. As Christ submitted to the authorities of his day, scripture asks us to submit to ours. God wants us to focus on preaching the gospel of Christ to people who need to hear it. And when Christians turn into protesters, It can distract from the message of the gospel that we want to proclaim. Now, to be sure, this isn't a blank check. There is a point at which Christians are called to resist authority. As scripture says elsewhere, we must obey God rather than men. We might get to that point. And the elders are proceeding deliberately and prayerfully through the situation. But speaking for myself, I don't believe that we're at the point where civil disobedience is required. Right now, I think it would be an unnecessary distraction from our purpose as a church, which is to be followers of Christ who make followers of Christ who make followers of Christ. Now, I know this is hard for a lot of you to accept. I mean, we're Americans. We like our freedoms. But submission to authority is good for the soul. It challenges our pride, which is a good thing. And it's also an act of worship. As Peter writes, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority. So that's handrail one. The other handrail that we're holding on to as we stumble our way forward through this is serve one another in love. This is probably less objectionable, but just as important. I mean, this coronavirus situation is our chance to show the world what love looks like and what the church can look like. As Jesus tells us, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, I know That this situation is challenging and frustrating for everybody in some way, but can we stay focused on our primary mission, which is to love? You might be frustrated with the government right now, but are you letting your frustrations keep you from praying for sick people and for the hospital workers who are working overtime to keep our medical establishment running? You might be royally ticked off at your school district for their boneheaded decisions, but are you encouraging and praying for the teachers and for the administrators who might be disappointing you? You might be just peeved at your church leaders, but are you communicating lovingly 
and humbly with them. You can be mad, you can be frustrated, but you can't stop loving. Even if you think the coronavirus situation is overblown, we can still love each other. Now that's not easy. Loving each other requires sacrificing for the sake of the other. It means inconveniencing yourself for other people. For example, it's not loving to mistreat and judge others who aren't wearing masks. If you want to keep your distance for them, if, if, if you want to disagree with their choices, do that. But don't judge them. Let God do that. You just welcome them. As Paul says, accept one another as Christ accepts you, even if they're not wearing masks. On the flip side, it's not loving to not wear a mask and disrespect the personal space of other people. People care about personal space these days. It's not because they don't like you. They're just trying to stay healthy according to the dictates of their own conscience. If you choose not to wear a mask for whatever reasons, which is your right, don't assume that other people are okay with that. Do so lovingly. Give people their space. Ask people what they're comfortable with, and then do that in service to them. That's what love and service to others looks like in these strange days, sacrificing your own wishes, your own space for the sake of other people. So, two handrails found in Scripture. Submit to our leaders and serve one another in love. That's how we can get through this. That's how we're going to get through this. And that's how we're going to get through this together. So that's it from me. Happy Thanksgiving. This is Pastor Smat. Smiting out.